Hello and welcome to my 2020 presidential election prediction video. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to be showing you three electoral maps that are entirely plausible for the November 3rd election. The last one will be my official prediction for the election. A note of warning before we begin. This video will not contain any political talk. I am a mathematician. I am a statistician. I look at the numbers. I have studied the polls with the help of multiple websites. I have analyzed a lot of trends over the past few months. These predictions are simply my best guess as to what will happen based on the analysis that I've put forth. Each map is by no indicator my own personal political beliefs. On November 3rd, I'm going to be live streaming the entire night, starting probably around 8 p.m. I'm going to have a white erase board. I'm going to have the map of the United States. We're going to fill it in together. We're going to have some good conversations. Again, I am not discussing politics. I am simply discussing the numbers behind the polling and everything in between in that regards. Without further ado, let's get into it. As you can see here, I've analyzed the last 50 years' worth of presidential elections. I've also analyzed the polls for 2020 and the 2016 polls and the results from 2016. According to 538.com, here are the latest numbers per state. Now, to save a little bit of time, I'm going to immediately enter the states that I believe are absolute givens, and that's not really much of a contest. Locations such as the District of Columbia, Wyoming, Massachusetts, Vermont, uh, Hawaii, New York, California, Connecticut, all of these states where the polls are way more than 10 points, I'm just going to immediately enter in. With that being said, let's knock out some of the last remaining states and have a short conversation about each. Right now, Trump has a 5.8% lead in Alaska. Alaska last went Democrat in 64 under Lyndon Johnson. Arizona has only gone Democrat once in the past 70 years in 96 for Clinton. Right now, Biden's up by three. Florida has always been a perennial back and forth. Biden is up by 3.1. Georgia is razor thin this year, having gone Democrat last in 92 with Bill Clinton, and before with 80 and 76 with Jimmy Carter, of course. But right now, Biden is up by a 0.8. Iowa is always a back and forth state. Right now, Biden's up by 1.2. To. Maine's second congressional district, I don't know if you knew this, but Maine and Nebraska are the only states that give two electoral votes for the state vote and then an additional uh, electoral vote for each individual congressional district. Um, so Maine splits theirs and so does Nebraska's, but Maine's first congressional, I'm sorry, second congressional district is razor thin again, 0.2 in favor of Biden. Michigan surprisingly went Republican in 2016 due to a major flip in the polls. Right now, Biden's up by 7.5. Minnesota has last gone Republican in 72 for Nixon. Right now, Biden's up by 7.7. .7. Missouri went Democrat in 76 for Carter and in 92 and 96 for Clinton. Right now, 6.5 in favor of Trump. Montana last went Democrat in 92. Uh, right now, Trump is only up by 7.1. Nebraska went last went Democrat in 64. Trump is up by 7.1. Nebraska's second congressional district, uh, only a 4.8 lead for Biden. Nevada has tended to go back and forth up until roughly 2000. Then it's gone purely Democrat with the exception of 04. Right now, Biden's up by 6.3. North Carolina has only gone Democrat twice in the last 50 years. Right now, Biden's up by 2.8. Ohio has always been a back-and-forth state. It is said that no Republican has ever won the presidency without Ohio. Trump is up by 1.1. Pennsylvania surprisingly went Republican in 2016. Right now, Biden is up by 6. South Carolina last went Democratic in 1976. Trump is up by 7.2. Texas, which typically has been a very strong Republican state, uh, last went Democrat in 1976 with Jimmy Carter. Trump is only up by 0.7. And finally... Uh, another big surprise, Wisconsin last went Republican in 1984 before the 2016 election when it swung in Trump's favor. Right now, Biden is up by 6.4. So if the election were to happen based on the 538 polling of today, uh, Biden would win going away with 357 electoral votes. According to the website, you need 270 to win. However, in my research as a statistics teacher, I have found and discussed with my students the idea that polling today is not very accurate due to the way that they are collected. For generations, polling has been found by phone calls. But with the advent of smartphones and people being able to see exactly what number is calling, um, people tend to not answer their phone as often as they should, which leads to most polls today having a less than 5% response rate, which means if you asked a 1,000 people to participate in your poll, you'd only get 50 people out of that 1,000. 
Typically, you get the people who have the strongest opinions on both sides, the left and the right. So what does one do if you need to evolve with the times? I know that they have tried waiting the polls, I know that they've tried text messaging and emails and things of that nature, but unfortunately, there needs to be a better way to collect polling data today. That is partly the reason why there was such a flip in 2016 even with states that were still solidly red or blue. For example, in 2016, Trump won Alabama by 28 points, as you can see right here. However, the polling leading up to the election, Trump was only leading in the polls by 22.3, which means that Trump outperformed that poll by 5.7. Now, it didn't make a difference in regards to where Alabama went in the Republican corner, but it did make a difference in other states. For example, in 2016, Hillary Clinton was polling ahead in Florida by 0.7. Now, there was a flip in the Republican direction by 1.7, which is within the margin of error, but that toss-up state ended up flipping back to Trump. A much more drastic flip happened in Michigan, where Hillary Clinton was polling in Michigan up by 4.2 points. There was a 5.2 percentage flip in the direction of Trump. Similar flips were seen in North Carolina, and in Pennsylvania, and in Wisconsin. Those states alone gave the election to Trump. So now, I don't know exactly what these polling companies have done differently, but I don't think it has been enough. So applying these flips in a very conservative way to the current 2020 polling data from 538.com, I found the following. In this column here, you can see an adjusted number. Now, I've highlighted the numbers that are less than 2.5 percentage points. Georgia flips. Iowa flips. North Carolina flips. Now, with my adjusted numbers applying the 2016 flips from the 2016 polling data, I now have this electoral map. Now, in my opinion, this is a much more likely map to happen on November 3rd. There are still several states to watch. For example, Arizona is within the margin of error. So is Florida. So is Maine's 2nd Congressional District. So is Michigan. So is Pennsylvania. So is Texas. So is Wisconsin. In my opinion, based on all of this data, the election is very close to the point where it would be a proverbial coin flip. So I have to make a call, and I would like to give you my official predictions. Looking at the real clear politics polling average, here has been the polling average in Pennsylvania since the beginning of May. And yes, it's gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, but you really have to pay attention to what's happening in October. At the beginning of October, clearly Biden was ahead by almost six points. Since then, there has been a drastic dip. Now, yes, a little bit of a recovery, but what is going to happen after this? I believe that Pennsylvania is going to flip Trump. If you look at Florida, this is the polling data in Florida. Florida since August. Beginning in August, there was a drastic uptick for Trump. In September, it really got super close, but then there was a huge dip at the beginning of October. Since then, that gap has been closed, and I believe that that gap is going to continue closing. I believe that Florida is going to flip. Finally, looking at Wisconsin, which has been the epicenter of a lot of different political things, but again, I am not going to go into the details of that. I am simply looking at the numbers. In 2016, there was a 6.3% flip in the direction of the Republicans. Clinton was leading by five points, more than five percentage points, leading up to the election. Now, the polling data has not been that close, but there has been a recent uptick for Trump and a recent slight downtick for Biden. With a week and a half until the election, considering what happened last time, I am going out on a limb and saying that Wisconsin is also going to flip. Okay, so I totally forgot to do a little bit of a recap here at the end. First of all, with mail-in balloting, everything that I said could literally just be thrown out the window. So who knows? Everything involved with the pandemic is unprecedented as it is, so why not mail-in balloting as well? Second, I just wanted to recap my three electoral maps. What I have highlighted on the right is the electoral numbers according to the polls as of today. What I have here is an adjusted electoral number based on the polls from 2016, which, to be honest, if I had to put money on it, I would say that this is what's going to happen. But then I have my electoral numbers here. You can see the map on the left, and this is my official prediction map as to what will happen on election night. When I live stream, I will have this set up somewhere on the screen where you can see exactly what percentage um, I've gotten correct for the presidency of the Senate and the House 
So join us on election night. Bring your favorite snacks. We'll have some good conversation. Again, I'm not getting into political debates. I am simply going to be discussing the numbers. So make sure you like and share and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Join us live streaming election night.